Ya. How do you expect to become a good frightened man if you can't even follow orders? But I don't want to learn how to fright. I just want to be friendly. Now get off this post and stay off! Oh boy! Now I'm free to go out and make friends! <laughs> Why are you crying, little girl? I'm little Bo Peep. I've lost my sheep and I don't know where to find them. <laughs> my name is Casper. Maybe I could find your sheep. Oh, will you, Casper? Sure, Bo Peep. And I won't come back till I find them. Have you seen little Bo Peep sheep? Uh, Ghost! Rub a dub dub, three men in the drum, and who do you think we be? The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, all thrumming our way out to sea. Have any of you gentlemen seen Bo Peep? A ghost! scared when they see me. Sang a song of six pence, a pocket full of rye. Four and twenty black birds baked in a pie. Hello, Mr. Pie Man. Have you seen Bo Peep's sheep? A ghost! I'll have to tell Bo Peep I can't find her sheep after all. Bo Peep sheep! Oh boy! Lamps too! Yum yum! I must do something to save them! Another one! That's funny! I could have sworn I hide one out here. All right, now follow me. They're not getting away from me! One of them, anyway. <laughs> Lamb stew at last. Phew, it's kind of warm in there. Ah! A ghost! <laughs> Ah! Uh.
you'll notice the fabulous homes of the famous motion picture stars. Gee, Uncle Raymond, riding a bus is lots of fun. <laughs> Just wait. You ain't seen nothing yet. And here you'll see the home of Paramount Pictures. Okay, Megatron, this is where we get off. Watch him make pictures, Uncle Hyman? Can we, huh? Can we? Why, certainly, Megatroid. Now, in these buildings is where they make the movies. Come on, let's go through this one. Now, uh, this is a movie set for a super colossal jungle picture, you know what I mean? Boy, oh boy, a jungle! Uncle Hyman, look out, you'll drown! <laughs> it's only a mirror. The movies use it for water effects. Gee, you fooled me, Uncle Hyman! <laughs> Megatroid, it's only a mechanical dummy. Born actor. With my direction and your talent, I could make you a star. Oh boy! You think so? I've always wanted to be a movie star. Now, Catnip, you are a pirate captain. We start the scene with you shouting orders to the crew. Okay! I got you, Mr. Director. Lights, camera, action! <laughs> All right, you scurvy sea dogs! Swap the deck! Man the topsails! And now a terrible storm breaks loose. All hands on deck! Batten down the hatches! Secure the rigging under! Under!
one of those humans now. A human? Yay! We finally got one! I'm the carp on this beat, miss. You're under arrest. The Supreme Court is now in session and the trial is about to begin. The plaintiff is the fish, the defendant is the human. Officer Finn, bring the jury in. With a sardine jury all tried and true, an oily verdict we promise you. The first witness from Fish Land, Willie Weakfish, take the stand. While swimming on my way to school, down where the ocean is sandy, I nearly swallowed this fish hook, which I thought was peppermint candy. Oh, that's a fish story! Order in the court! Order in the court! Let there be no interfering! Mr. Sailfish, take the stand! Let's continue with this hearing! I was saving nonchalantly, never dreaming of attack, when before you could say, oh, Houlihan, I was mounted on a plaque. I didn't do it! I didn't! Oh! Quiet, quiet, let order prevail. Call in the next witness to unveil his tale. It was a cool December day, and I was below the ocean swirl when I was netted by a whaling tug and drained of my winter oil. Judge, that's a whale of a tail. Order in the court. Now let's examine the testimony of the widow Salmon. My children and I were once happy, and life altogether was grand. But now I'm a poor, lonely widow. You see, Judge, my husband was canned. <laughs> there you are, sardines of the jury. The evidence is crystal clear. Make haste in reaching your verdict. It's late, and my supper time's near. We find the human guilty! The Fishland trial is over. It was just and fair. And now, here is your sentence. A seat in the electric chair. The human has escaped.
Good morning, teacher. I brought you a big fat apple. Yeah, hi, fellas. Yes, ma'am, teacher. Oh, I don't think I can take another day with that Huey. Your son, Huey, has been expelled from kindergarten. He is a dope. Uh, did I get promoted, Ma? Huh? No, but don't worry, dear. I'll get you a private tutor. Ah, so. From you, baby Huey, I make a genius. And now, Huey, school, it commences already. Be a good boy, Huey. And now, baby Huey, attention, please. Arithmetic will be the first lesson we will tackle. The uh, tackle? Oh boy, tackle! 15, 25, 14, 32, and 18. Tackle! <laughs> Crazy? Oh, now the next subject, it gives chemistry. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So watch closely. First, I spill the chemicals into two glazes. Oh, boy! Soda pop! And now, the experiment, we will test it. Yeah, I'll taste it. My name! Test it, not taste it! Mmm, that was delicious. <laughs> hey, Mr. Tudor, mix me another soda pop. Smart enough 
but you saved my life. I give it to you, a diploma. Uh, goody, goody. Gee, thanks, sir. I'm so proud. Hey, Ma. <laughs> Where should I hide my diploma? Well, here we are, Casper. And we got the whole day to play ball. Gosh, I'm sorry, Spooky, but I have a date with Wendy. Goyles! Bah! The joy killers! Wendy. Thanks, Hazel. Have fun. Hiya, Wendy. All set to go? Come on in, Casper. I'll be ready in a minute. What plays with coils is a square. Your chair, Miss Wendy. Oh, thank you, sir. I'll crap this romance, but good. <laughs> I just can't understand it. <laughs> you take a dip, Casper, while I get lunch ready. Okay, I'll be back in a jiffy. for your collection.
boy killers. Catch black crow and chop off cocoa. Stew in pot just like chow mein. Slowly eat. Now goodbye pain. Mmm. That feline's got a bad toothache. That's all I has to know. Boss, boss! I have to soul living soul what knows the secret formula for curing that toothache. And boss, if I dies, the secret dies with me. Secret? Uh, what secret? The secret of freezing the nerve, boss. Freezing the nerve? Hmm. That sounds logical. Now just stick your head into that freezing unit. Yeah? Yeah? And now we refrigerate it. <laughs> Small fry. Strutting by the pool room. Toothless. 
for your new set of ivories. <laughs> J. Caesar Bandwagon, head of Blockbuster Pictures. And I know you're aching all over to meet our great new star. So, <laughs> ache a little longer. First, listen to how I discovered him. One year ago, at Blockbuster, I called in my producers and said, I want you to go out and find me a great new star. Search the world, spend a fortune, but bring back a star star to Blockbuster Pictures. For expenses, I gave them my Diners Club card and said, get rolling. Well, they really started rolling. They rolled and rolled. And still they rolled. With very little luck. Meanwhile, back at the studio, Ah! I knew you couldn't find a star. I just wanted to prove it. Now I'm going to show you how to find a star. For an old showman like me, it was duck soup. <laughs> Young lady, <laughs> you're exactly what I've been looking for. Nice legs, lovely eyes. Now, let me hear your voice. <laughs> it's all right, officer. I'm J.C. Bandwagon, head of Blockbuster Pictures. Eventually, I was identified and released. Six hours later, I was across the ocean. A Russian Rock Hudson. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm uh, J.C. Bandwagon, uh, head of Blockbuster Pictures. Psst. Hitna, Hollywood Big Shot, Stare Voska, Blockbuster Pictures. Not capitalistic spy. Felicia! Through the intervention of the American Embassy, I was identified and released. Two days later, I was back in Hollywood. Aha! Another Jimmy Cagney. I waited for him to come out. <laughs> uh, just a minute. Uh, I'm uh, J.C. Bandwagon, head of Blockbuster Pictures. Oh, yeah? You look like a stool pigeon. You're J.C.'s a bandwagon. The head of Blockbuster Pictures. Really? Oh, I would have taken you for a pickle salesman. Do you know why? It's that hat. Don't listen to those who tell you that clothes make all the difference in a man. I say that instead, what goes on your head affects you more than clothing can. Now what makes me so gay and debonair? Your socks, or your gloves, your long and silky hair? Why, it's none of those that makes the people stare. Why, of course, it's this, the topper that you wear. Think of all the famous men of history. <laughs> and I think that you will soon agree with me. 
that their choice of hat is certainly the key to their well-developed personality. Think of Robin Hood, Napoleon, MacArthur, or of Zorro, Sherlock Holmes, or Davy Crockett. You can go on till tomorrow. Every one of them, I do declare, <laughs> chose his hat with the greatest of care. Oh, when you're wearing the right kind of hat, <laughs> no one looks at your tie or cravat. <laughs> No one gives a hoot about your style of suit If you're wearing the right kind of hat <laughs> When you put on the right kind of hat Well, no one cares if you're skinny or fat <laughs> Let me tell you this, you can never miss And your pockets will never be flat When you're wearing the right kind of hat Ooh, Just look what a hat can do Oh, thank heaven for Mimi and Louisa. Mr. Christian, you've made a fool out of me. What a kiss, that's the stroke. I got a million of them, I got a million of them. But, uh, but, uh, but however, there are never have I, have you, have he, but, uh, but however. Let me tell you this, you can never miss And your pockets will never be flat When you're wearing the right kind of hat I grabbed him and held tight A great talent like this wasn't going to get away Now, a great star must have a great name Howard Irving Melvin Harry Cat! Are you kidding? That's my mother-in-law's name. A Clark Abel. A great name. But no. Louie. Seymour. Eddie. Wait. Uh, get me names unlimited. Uh, $50,000 before we start thinking. I 
Frigid. 